Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today is meant to be a q and I'm feeling sick and so I ask you guys if you can send me some questions and then I will answer them in a video so I can take more time with the, uh, with the questions and the answers but also I can take it a bit easy so I can rest. But you have sent me some really incredible questions and that really motivated me to answer them in a better way and so I'm gonna try my best even if I'm not feeling great to film this in a better way maybe i can use the help of some of my colleagues to answer some of the questions and try to make this video look a little bit nicer than just sitting and answering to them okay i think we're ready so we are going to answer the next questions you filmed it before no just like some seconds and so i have the andre kralicek balestar <laughs> and ivan sanchez second star ivan is the biggest star of my youtube channel i have to say Welcome, it's welcome, Ivan. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the question is, it seems like the woman starting the Corps de Ballet and they learn a lot, very valuable experiences because of the teamwork, cooperation, unity required. Is the men's experience similar? Uh, in some way, yes, but I think the girls are have the chance to train more because they have <coughs> a white act where they have to be uh, all together and they have to do corps. While men, we just have maybe uh, two pieces, two entrances, a waltz or something like that, uh, dancing with the corpse. And we learn how to be together when we have these experiences, but not since uh, we arrive in a company. Thank you, Ivan. Your thoughts? I completely agree with Ivan, but for example, in my school, maybe it's because we were only two boys in, in the class, but we've never done any corp piece uh, for the whole school, you know, so... It's the same. The girl, girls did it, but we didn't. Yeah, I think it's true that we, we don't train the same way. The boys, we are not trained like as the girls for like cooperation and unity, but we have that competition factor. If you see every ballet boys, that we, we train pirouettes together, jumps together, and try to push each other to be better. And I think this is something positive that we learn as boys in ballet. We have this competition, and the same it can happen in other sports or other... Um, professions, but I think in ballet is is really really nice that we get that that we get this friendship and cooperation, but in just in a different way. We don't maybe use it on stage as much, but we use it to help each other become better. Thank you. We are late for class. Okay, let's keep answering the questions. Do you have any ritual to focus before going on a stage? No, I don't have any ritual if you mean it as a, something that I do before the show, something special that I do every time. No, I don't do nothing like that. What I do before the shows is because I normally get quite anxious or nervous. I just try to relax as much as I can, but also I try to relax my body as much as I can because whenever I will be overthinking or trying or being anxious about the performance, uh, my muscles will be tense. And so this is something I learned, to try to relax as much as possible and, and let loose my body before the show. This is the only thing I really do. And, oh, actually, yes, there's something I do. Whenever I would say, like, good luck to everyone, the last one, if I'm dancing with, with my girlfriend, will be always my girlfriend. That's it. This is something I do. Okay, guys, now you will help me out with something. Is the, quest the question is, is dance talent or hard work? Both. Both, Both <laughs> require. Dance is an art. It's more hard work than talent. 
Boss. You I need to feel 100% with boss. So it could be 30% of talent, That's 70% of hard work. Agreed. Or you have 70% of talent and 30% of hard work. Agreed. But both I understand. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree with someone. Discipline always a bit of the talent. Okay, we go to the next question. Joao, someone asked me uh, if being 14 years old, this person can start in a dance conservatory. And so for, for you that don't know, Joao started to dance quite late. So I think he's the perfect person to tell us if someone can start late and how, how, it, how this is for, for the people. So uh, I started at the age of 17. And by that time I was doing just uh, two classes a week. Uh, and then I stopped for one year. So I really started my training and when I was 20 years old. And it's not late, not at all. If it's this that what you really want to do with your life, so put everything on it and work for this because it's not late. Even you now. Just keep working and everything that you're gonna do for your life it needs to be just for this and be surrounded by good people that always wants to help you and try to take the best from everybody. You need to be always learning. Everything needs to be a lesson for you. Thank you, Joao. That was actually amazing advice. And so true. If you want to do something, you can just you just have to go for it 100%. And that's it. Age is just a number. And 14 years old is really young, really, yeah. really young. Like you, you cannot imagine. So thank you, Joao. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, so we need to do more questions. I'm sorry about this video because I feel it's so random. <laughs> Joao still here. Random can be good sometimes. Okay, I will continue. The next question is, why do you dance? This is an interesting question because I feel there are two different reasons why. The first reason is because of the physicality and the fact that for me it's, a, it's something that can never be perfect and there is always this goal, there is always then this next chapter, this next thing to do, next thing to try. And this keeps me really motivated and I think it's a nice thing from, from dance. I mean, I think life in general is the same. You will never be perfect, but I enjoy that side of dance. And the second one is because I believe we are here to share with people and we are here to uh, pass on to the next generation whatever we learn in our time. And I think that ballet and dance in general has that factor that we can send, we can give emotions and we can give different stories and we can share even with our colleagues and with our teachers and learn from each other and then uh, express that and give it to someone else. I think this is the thing, the reason why we do live performances is to, to make someone else feel something different and to share stories. So this is why I love what I do and why I like to dance or why I dance. Next one, can you please more make more videos about jumps because with your help I achieve a beautiful double cabriol. Okay, first thank you so much uh, for watching the videos and taking my advice. I want to do more jumping videos and do more tutorials and everything is just difficult because of time and uh, I'm all day in the theater so it's, it's difficult to create videos and, and, and do all these things but I will try my best to do more stuff like that. Next, these are two questions that are uh, related so someone asked tips for starting recovering and being produ as productive as possible during the time off and the second one asked in Spanish. Uh, for a dancer that tries to come back to physical shape, what do you recommend? So for both things, in my opinion, the best thing uh, that you can do is first to rest until you are fully recovered from whatever is the injury that you have. And then after that, whenever you have an injury, there's a reason behind that injury. And that can mean that you are maybe doing something wrong or something that can be done in a different way. And so I think that that awareness to understand that maybe that injury happened from something that you are doing, so you cannot come back to the same person, the same dancer as you were before. I think it does, this is really important to understand. And so when, when you come back, I think you should be, first you need to realize what is it, that thing that is making your injury, or you need to realize how can you improve your dancing so less injuries will happen, and then you can start to work on those weaknesses that you have and by making your weaknesses stronger, I think you can become a better dancer. 
Of course, when you are injured and you have rested, your body is in a better position to create muscles again and to create new uh, ways to work. And I think that's a great opportunity. So I, I always like to take that time off of that injury to reset my body and reteach what I have to do in a better way than I did before. And so this way, I, I, it's not just coming back to dance, but I learn from that injury and then I can avoid it in the future. The years of rehearsals is done, but now Sawa is doing some photo shoot for the theater, and so I decided to come with her here. This is the foyer of the theater with the Christmas tree. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to wrap up the video here. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know I didn't answer all of the questions you guys sent me, but I'm planning on doing some extra videos with those questions because they were really, really good. We had for dinner pho, pho soup. If you guys are feeling under the weather, eating the pho soup is one of the best things you can do. Mm. Yes. So. I hope tomorrow I will be alive after spending all the energy on today's video. But I think <laughs> even if it was really random, something nice came. And I just thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to be your best and I will see you in the next one.